Here's problem 1025. Two forces of magnitude 50 newtons as shown in the figure below act on a cylinder of radius 4 meters and mass 6.25 kilograms. The cylinder, which is initially at rest, sits on a frictionless surface. After one second, the velocity and angular velocity of the cylinder in meters per second and radians per second respectively are to find the velocity and angular velocity, we need to find the net force and the net torque on this object so that we can know what the acceleration and angular acceleration are for this object. So let's look at net force. <clears throat> we got a force going to the right, and we have the same magnitude force going to the left on this object. Even though they're acting at different spots, they're acting on the same object. So our net force the summation of our forces is equal to F minus F, which would be equal to zero. So our net force is zero. So if we have no net force, we have no acceleration, our final velocity, which is our initial velocity, plus acceleration times time, no acceleration and no initial velocity, because we start from rest, means that our final velocity is zero. So there will be, we'll have a, after one second, we'll have a final velocity of zero. Nice to know. What about torque? Well, one of our forces is going right through the center, right through the axis point of this cylinder. So that has no moment arm. So that will have, not contribute to the torque. The other force is working on the edge here. And that will have a moment arm equal to this perpendicular distance right here. The moment arm is equal to the radius, which would be equal to 4 meters in this case. So we'll have the force times that moment arm. Our net torque will be equal to force times moment arm, and that's going to be equal to um, 50 newtons times 4 meters, which will give us 200 newton meters. That's going to be the net torque on this object. All right, if we can find the moment of inertia, we can find um, the um, angular acceleration. So our moment of inertia is equal to, for a disk, it's one-half mr squared. That's going to be one-half times the mass, 6.25, times the radius, 4 squared. And that's going to be 8 times 6.25. What is that? 50 kilogram meter squared. So, since our net torque should equal the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, the angular acceleration is the net torque divided by the moment of inertia. That's going to be 200 divided by 50, or 4 radians per second squared. That is our angular acceleration for rotation on this disk. Hence, if we want to find our final angular velocity, that's going to be our initial angular velocity plus angular acceleration times time. In this case, we started from rest, so our initial angular acceleration is zero. Our angular acceleration is four. Our initial angular velocity is zero. Our angular acceleration is four. Our time is one second, so we're going to end up with a final angular velocity of uh, four radians per second. So our final angular velocity is four radians per second. Our final velocity is zero for this object.